And then you also mentioned to me that just because we set this on what we consider now to be our front cover, we can totally decide right. it's a back cover later. Right. No because worries. Because all this is doing is later we're going to come back in and add something here for a closure okay. to help hold our book closed. And it looks equally pretty on the front as it does on the back. Okay. So we have options nice. and we can decide that later. Lovely. So now what, are we going to use these strings to... Yes. So for the binding this? system, we're going to take some elastic and you can have it coordinate, you can have it um, uh, use two different colors, whatever mm -hmm. you think. And we're going to string one through each hole. Okay. Oh, that looks pretty. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think I kind of like... Uh, yeah, it's I got love both that. Cover, colors yep. on my cover. Love it. Yeah. So, and I think I'm going to go with orange. So I'm going to start on the outside and because okay. our eyelet hole is really wide, we get lucky and we don't even have to use a darning needle or anything to feed the elastic through. And I always tell my students to make sure they cut anything that they're going to be binding with at least twice the height of their spine. Okay. Um, it's always better to end up with too much to tie off than not enough. Yeah. So then we're going to come into the center of the book. Now for now, all we're going to do is tie these either into a loose knot or a bow. Okay. Um, a good determination of how tight your elastic should be will come when we add our pages. Because what we want it to do is bow a little bit. Because the tighter that elastic is, the easier it is going to keep your pages in place. Oh, okay. So I'm actually going to knot mine, I think, this time because my pieces seem to be a little bit shorter. And then I'll leave the, the length for now. Sometimes I like to tie it in a bow later. So typically I say if the, your, your elastic is tied tight enough, if the edges of your book are starting to bow a little bit. Oh, mine are nowhere okay. near tight enough. Yep, <laughs> definitely. Because the thing is, you're going to be able to slip your pages under the way you did that but they're not going to be tight enough to hold them tightly. You don't want okay. them loosening and shifting as you're using them. So if they snap back or the edges of your book start to come up a little, you know they're nice and tight. And then like I said, you can leave these or tie them. I usually leave them to the end just in case I want to okay. untie them and rework them or I need to add any. And um, they also look really neat tied on the outside, like if you wanted to leave these for fringe oh, mm -hmm. and add some beads to them or anything like that. Okay, cool. Now those are right. all tied yeah, up. Much better. Okay. And as you build pages and add to them, you know, you can adjust that too. So elastic is sometimes hard to unknot, but this mm -hmm. is so thick that if you insert a darning needle or a, a tweezer, yeah. you can usually undo that knot okay. fairly easily. And we're not going to add anything to this cover hole yet. We're going to save that for later in the project. Okay. So now we've got our super easy binding system. Nice. Um, Very easy. I like that. Right. <laughs> Another thing you can do later is come back in and tie this with a piece of ribbon or something. You get a nice X. Oh, yeah. Add a bead. You can wrap it with um, other piece of elastic and tie mm -hmm. it. You can really fancy it up a little bit. You're full of good ideas. I love it. And I'm just going to start spraying the ribbon in rainbow order right down the line. I don't care if the colors overlap a little. Oh, I wow. actually want them to so that they start melding together. That's another yellow, so I can skip that one. Ooh. Green, blue, and then I always have to end with purple again. Why not? Why not is right. So now I have all those colors in the pan like that. Mm -hmm. Now if I were to just grab all that and start squishing it and wrinkling it together, which mm -hmm. I like to do before it dries so I get that crinkle effect, I'm going to risk getting mud, obviously, because yeah. these. So what I like to do is pick it up very gently. And you can put it between a piece of newsprint. You can put it between paper towels, whatever you have. And then we're going to, with the very lightest touch, we're going to just crinkle it once or twice. And you end up with some great texture paper towel to use in another project when you're done. And then I'm going to open it up and look at it. And you can see where wow. my colors are start, starting to come together.